Another team is honoring their past this weekend, and we're going to start with that. This week, the New York Rangers are going to hang Henrik Lundqvist's number 30 up into the rafters. And it's there's a lot less Ranger numbers that are still being retired, but they're, they're starting to catch up. But first, let me start with this, and I'm going to start with you, John. What is your favorite memory when it comes to Henrik Lundqvist? One particular memory. Ooh. Um... Uh, I've, I've gotta, I've gotta give you the memory that I was there for, Game Six of the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals and the save. And I, I, I was there with my friend Dan. Um, it's, it's funny because I always tell the story about that game, about how he made the save, and they went to Alexei Kovalov, who stood up and got a great ovation, was wearing like a black and beige Columbia ski jacket, and got, like I said, a great ovation. He was neutral, got his ovation, and stood, uh, sat down. They went to him a little later in the game. He stands up, he rips the jacket off, and he has the 1994 Stanley Cup final shirt on. <laughs> and between the Henrik Lundqvist save and the garden absolutely shaking to its core after he ripped that jacket off, I said to Dan, I was like, we're winning this game, man. We're winning this game, and they won that game. And the, the save was a big, big part of that game. I, that's the the noise in that building was deafening when he made that save. We couldn't even believe it because we all thought it was going to be like one of those EA Sports NHL goals where the puck pops up in the air and goes over the goaltender's <laughs> back and goes in. So we all thought it was going to be one of those, and we were just yeah. ready for the disappointment. And the blocker just comes around, and we were just like, ah. <laughs> like the, 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 and, and if Alex Goldberg, if you're watching, this is one of your favorites, and Anthony Rocco will absolutely know this one. And it was not good! <laughs> yeah. Which is funny, because uh, he didn't say that in that moment. No, Anthony, do you... But he would always say that, and that, that was like the first thing that popped into my head. I was like, and it was not no. <laughs> Anthony, just... do you have a Lundquist memory you want to share? Oh. Um, I, I just, I remember... In, in his rookie year, um, you know, him, Kevin Weeks, I remember as an Islander fan saying, All right, well, the Rangers are really going to be in trouble this year because Kevin Weeks, I didn't really think, was was too, was too particularly good anymore at that point. And we and we didn't really know what we were going to get from Henrik Lundqvist. So, um, you know, when I first saw him play and as, you know, went on early in the year, I just remember saying to myself, you know, the Rangers, you know, to go from Richter to this guy, they just strike gold figures as an Islander fan. But... Um, I just remember his, at first kind of his unorthodox play, like his style. Um, Liga hadn't really seen his stance, and it was a little different. Um, and I just remember saying to myself, you know, some of this guy seems that, you know, he could be an elite goaltender in this league. And sure enough, he went on to beat one. But, um, you know, he was the backbone of the Rangers team. A lot of those years they were competitive. They really weren't as good as they should have been. Um, it was because of him. Uh, he really drove that team. Um, and as an Islander fan, you have the utmost respect for him you know he was he's a classy guy um you know he, he did the right things you know, on and off the ice um and you know he cemented his lore uh in rangers history the only thing missing is obviously the cup but um you know his number going up to the rafters will be special for you guys he deserves it um and you know it's just a shame that his career had to end the way it did not on his terms essentially but um maybe it was all supposed to be that way, never playing for another team aside from the Rangers. So, uh, but you know, he had a like I said, you know, elite, elite goaltender. I honestly kind of almost equated to like, you know, Dan Marino was an elite quarterback. Yeah, never won the Super Bowl. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist is kind of the same way. Hey, um, I don't. I am sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. If, if you can, because Anthony just reminded me of it. If you can, Mark, go to my Twitter account. Um, I think it's from either yesterday or the day before. It's a chart of all the goals uh, saved above expected during Lundqvist's career. And you could see that Lundqvist is literally heads and shoulders above everybody else since the start of the salary cap era. If you can, if you can post that on there. It's I'll, I'll do it for the, uh, for the edited version on this. Because after all... 
Uh, I'm going to give you my memory and then I'm going to go further with what you said and also what you said on the final buzzer featuring John Falkowski. More on that more in a, in a second. But, Phil, my, when it comes to my favorite Henrik Lundqvist memory, it's two weeks before yours. It was Game 7 versus the Penguins. It's the armpit save. Because oh, he makes a save with his damn armpit. We could talk about a baggy jersey as much as he wants, but he closed he closed the save down. And that's where you just had this. You're looking at this as a Ranger fan, knowing they've never beaten the Pittsburgh Penguins, the mighty Penguins. They were going to win that series. And you were shocked. You're just like, oh, my, oh my goodness. How is it? Yes. By the way, that's a good one, too, Steven. I mean, that, that's just how is it even fathomable that that they were able to do that but they were able to to come back and do that and by the way the previous year when they went down three two and Lundquist finished off the capitals with a hundred and twenty consecutive shutout minutes this was the highest scoring team in the league with a 30 goal scorer in a 48 game season and Lundquist said not nah. Beat him one nothing, and then the Rangers beat him five nothing. That's just to say to to go with on that. But uh, one last question, in honor of the Henrik Lundqvist uh, retirement, is the next retired number on this roster? Yes. What is it? It's twenty three. Okay, I didn't expect you were going to say twenty three. All right. Yeah. 23 is going to get retired, buddy. He's already got a Norris. And in, in three seasons, mind you, Adam Fox has gone through two different head coaches, three different defensive coaches, Lindy Ruff, mm -hmm. uh, Jock Martin, and now uh, Mike Kelly, I believe. Yep. Uh, for a third defensive coach. Oh, no, Gord Murphy. Sorry. Gord Murphy, not Mike Kelly. But, yeah. Right. Um, three different defensive coaches – two different head coaches and a Norris trophy. And he's scoring about a point per game right now. And he's only going to get better. And we're going to go more into the Norris trophy conversation in a moment. Anthony is the next retired number on this roster. I mean, it might be um, Fox is he, the trajectory tells you it's heading that way. I would say he, he needs to win, you know, probably a couple more Norris trophies, um, you know, and, you know, not necessarily the Stanley cup, but if he wins a couple more Norris trophies, you know, and, and still plays at this rate, it's definitely, it's definitely possible for sure. I'm going to look in the camera and try to say this with a straight face. Yes. CK 20. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> after he wins the, after he wins the heart trophy this year and the rocket Richard, uh, he's, they're going to make him captain and he's going to lead the Rangers to, to multiple Stanley cups. No, um, I would have to say, you know what, Phil? I thought it was going to be Sisterkin, but no, I think you're right. It's it's going to be Fox first. You know what? This is a good point about how, like, Harcourt. I don't think Greshner is getting retired. I, I think if they were going to retire Ron Greshner's number, they would have done it already. And Park has a chance, but I, I just don't know if they will because Leach has already had that number retired. Yeah, but they did that with Bathgate, so it's, 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 I, I it's not the end of the world. It. But I, I, it's, you know what, you know what, Phil, we wouldn't be in this situation if the Rangers respected their past nearly as much as the Islanders do. I mean, that's one thing I just want to gripe about for a second. Right. You know what, as you're much right. as I want to say the Islanders kind of live in their past, at least they respected it. The Rangers were just going, no, we're not going to retire. The first number they retired was Rod Gilbert. They, they were in existence for 50 years. You, you, didn't, you didn't have any other great players? You didn't well, know? I think, I think that just goes to show you, though, that it, how how I think how hard it is really to get your number retired. Teams, you sh you should you should either a have to be like win multiple cups on a team or be like a lifelong player on that team and at least have been like one of the best players at that position in the league to really get your number retired. I mean, why would I mean that that's like that's like Islander fans saying if or if the Islanders won the cup that Josh Bailey should get his number retired because he's played his whole career on the Islanders and, you know, he's kind of up there on some of, like, the assists and whatnot. But, no, I, I don't I don't think that's the case. It's you, To get your number retired, you should, like, be elite or be a, a legend to your specific team. So I'm going to add one more to that, Anthony, and that's being a member of the community. And we talked about this before with Clark Gillies. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about it with Adam Graves. Adam Graves... It did so much off the ice 
was the heart and soul of that the those nineties Rangers teams. Yes, it did actually just the way you said it before about Clark Gillies. I think both of them were number nine. How about that? So there you go. It's um you get those guys that they're in the trenches every single day. They're fighting. They're bleeding for their team. In the meantime, that's what gets the stars like Dennis Poppin, Brian Leach, Brian Trottier, Mark Messier, Alexei Kovalev, Mike Bossy. Not that I'm putting them all in the same breath, but all those guys won a Stanley Cup. And it's just at least one. So that counts. And it's, it, you know, that's what, what you need for those guys. So let's move on to, because we got a jam-packed show for you guys today. Uh, it really is jam-packed. Uh, so let's go on to now the current iteration of the New York Rangers. And by the way, after you watch one of the games, like the one tonight, check out the final buzzer with the man to my left right over there, Mr. John Filkowski, for interactive New York Rangers talk. And check out his good, bad, and ugly reviews that are always going to be on our Facebook page. But you, some of the, the great conversations you were able to have were this week when the Rangers beat the Maple Leafs, the Kings, and well, the car, the rotting carcasses of what's left of the Coyotes, and but they fell to uh, the the Carolina Hurricanes. By the way, in that Arizona game, speaking about rotting carcasses, Andrew Ladd scored, Anthony. So, yeah, yeah no. um, the Rangers I think improved he's got like six goals. <laughs> yeah, actually, he's had a good season after not playing for two. Um, and the Rangers improved to twenty eight eleven and four. Uh, they're first in the division right now. And I actually, the, those games are off there. It's a little bit more. And 7-3 and three in the last 10. Goal differential keeps going up, guys. Plus 22. You know, and my favorite headline of this week, Chris Kreider scored his NHL-leading 30th goal of the season. He's finally broken 30, guys. And, it, and he still has half a season to go. Sky is the limit. I'll start it off. I'm I'm just I'm just so pumped for 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 him and the great season that finally I knew this guy could turn in. But how about that win over the Kings, Philk? Yeah, yeah pretty exhilarating. Uh, they looked like they were down in that game. Uh, I don't want to say a slow start, but um, not a great one to that game. I would say probably about a a sixty forty split for LA. And then they uh, they got the lead at the end of that period, thankfully, with the power play. And Chris Kreider just doing his thing. Adam Fox, obviously, you know, tallying a point there on the Kreider uh, goal for, with the with an assist. And then they just got back in that game late. And Barkley Goodrow kind of, like I said, flew under the radar in that game. I thought he had a really good game. He was just in the right spot for what was an awesome deflection. So Barkley Goodrow ties it. And then... We get the shootout because the overtime really kind of just went by fast. I think that's the only overtime I think I've ever seen that's been entirely played on a four on four or uh, yeah, uh, as, as a four on four with no stops to go back to three on three since the inception of three on three overtime. Yep. Uh, so, I haven't seen another one. Cause I, 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 I haven't recalled any others. I, I mean, maybe it has happened, but uh, not that I've seen at least. So but um, yeah, I will. I will have to say that the, the shootout, though, that was some drama. Quinn Byfield coming out, the second overall pick in 2020, comes out and scores a really nice goal in the shootout. And then Gerard Gallant says, "My boy, I have faith in you. You're my boy, Blue." Goes out there with Alexi Lafreniere, and he just pulls a really nice move on John Quick, ties it back up, and then Adam Fox. Our Norris Trophy winner, the best defenseman in the league. He go, he just, he, he does it, and he ends it and sends everybody home happy. Uh, big win for the Rangers, but um, you know, it, it was good to get the the two points over LA, especially after the last game where they kind of got ragdolled around by LA and they just did not look good. It was one of their worst efforts of the season. So uh, yeah, and again, obviously Chris Kreider, another solid effort from him all around all night. And he, he seems to just be kind of leading the way. Mike kind of nails it on the head here. He's matured and we're seeing the real deal with him. He's scoring more. And like I said, the evolution of his game, you know, within the last five, six years, he added that net front presence to his game. Then in the, in, the, in the next few years after that, he started becoming better, a little better defensively. Now I think he's gotten to a, a level where he's better defensively than he's ever been before. He's reliable in the penalty kill now, which I never thought I would say either. 
And now we're seeing the biggest bugaboo with Chris Kreider. And now it's away. You know, the efforts from night to night. He's just giving you that effort that we all have been asking for on a nightly basis. And now you're seeing what happens when a six foot three, 230 pound power forward can play like this on a nightly basis. I'm not saying he's going to score every night or that he's going to finish with 50, but you know what? If he keeps giving you this, he's valuable. He's absolutely valuable. So keep leading the way, CK. And it's, it's no surprise. I think it's the, the, the Gerard Galan effect, but Anthony, there was a loss that was in there and it was to the Carolina hurricanes. They lost five, three Alexander Georgiev in net. Do you take anything from the loss or just look at the wins? The only thing I'd say about the loss is that that was that whole, I I don't know why Gallant didn't start just it against Carolina and then start Gorgiev against Arizona. Um, You know, it's the team you're battling for first in the division. Uh, Why not play your better goaltender? I mean, Alex Goldberg could probably beat the Coyotes in the game right now. So why not just start (laughs) Gorgiev in that game? I don't understand that call. Um, and that's, Arizona was up 3-1 at one point in that game, right? Yep. Against the Rangers. Yeah, it looked, it looked like it was going to be ugly for the Rangers, but uh, they stormed back. Similar how the, uh, the Coyotes were hanging in there with Pittsburgh last night. I think it was 3-3 at some point. And the Penguins are like, we're done playing around with you. And they blew them out of the water after that. But, um, no, I mean, listen, the – they, they were down for the, against the Kings for a little bit, but they came back and found a way to get a win. Same thing with Arizona. Um, and that, that's what you have to do. I mean, you're not going to win every night, but uh, and don't get me wrong. L.A. is not even close to being in the same bag as Arizona. L.A. is actually a really good team, but um, it's still the Rangers are the better team than L.A. You, you expect, especially at home, you want them to win that game, and they end up doing that. So, um, you know, good on them. And as for the loss against Carolina, it is what it is. You're playing your backup goalie against a high-powered offensive team. Um, no shame in that. You know what? The one thing I'll say about before Mark is that they they were really outplayed for the first two periods of that Carolina game. But boy, did they ever outplay Carolina in that third period! And they showed what you know. They showed that Carolina has weakness and has a vulnerability and has an opening in which you can really damage them in. So uh, yeah. I was going to say, Anthony is probably going to be telling a spooky story the way the lighting was starting to work for him. Um, <laughs> but now it's, now it's nice and bright in his, in his uh, area. But this team, you know what? The, the comeback in the third, that is a game. There are so many times, Phil, that this year I can't help but look at the New York Rangers and go, last year they lose that game. Last year they lose that game. You don't see that as much now. And what's the difference? Something almost since the genesis of this podcast, Gerard Gallant. That's a, that's it. It that's that that's the difference, and he's he, he's he, he's going to be mentioned in for coach of the year. By the way, rookie Braden Schneider. He's been fitting in pretty well. Almost a little bit too good. There's this quote this week. Some praise for him from his contemporary Jacob Truba saying, "Yeah, until he takes my job." Well. Then we got issues, but just the attitude he brings to the game and this kid, he's young and he's got a bright future. So you got to love what you're seeing out of the Rangers youth. So what do you guys think? Uh, the Rangers are, I mean, I'm running out of words to describe them. I'm not sure if they're going to win the division. Cause I keep predicting the Pittsburgh Penguins who are now one point behind them. Still, it's just going to be. Yeah, it's they, they need to get to be a to play a full sixty minutes, but you uh, know what, Phil? That. You, you what? I don't think I highlighted that. Did somebody else? No, uh, maybe Anthony did. I meant to click click down and I clicked the comment. Oh well, it's actually <laughs> good that you clicked that. So it it, it was actually quite appropriate because <laughs> Phil <laughs> mentions this. There's two things Phil has mentioned in a lot of his final buzzers, and let me see if this rings familiar to everybody that's been watching. It's. Uh, they don't start on time, or and but then Gerard Gallant makes adjustments. The, either those, it's fine to not do that if you're making adjustments. David Quinn didn't make adjustments. David Quinn was like the captain of the Titanic. He was yeah, always it, like, it's, uh, it's fine <clears throat> to a point, but if if this keeps continuing and they get into a playoff series and they do in the playoffs, it's going to come back to bite them. 
So that's why you got yeah. to fix this issue sooner than later. <clears throat> but so what do you guys think about the Rangers? Where are they going to finish in the division? Who are they going to play in the first round? Because it's pretty safe to assume they're probably going to be making the playoffs. <laughs> so uh, knock on wood, it's been five years, five long that years. Be an epic collapse. Yeah, I mean, you know, the last the last time the Rangers were in a playoff game, I met my my ex girlfriend. So uh, that, that's that's how long it's been, and I've been single for a while. Throw it all down in the comments below, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.